there are four things that are converging on us in today. One, of course, is the reason we've gathered, which is Founders Day, a day when we give thanks for, celebrate, and commit ourselves to their courage, their sacrifice, their willingness to give of their time and their money to be able to see a school like this come to pass. Starting it from scratch, it took a small group of people with vision and courage to say, this is something we need to do in this community. And because they had that vision and that courage and that willingness to step in, this is the school that this institution, we now enjoy, and even as we prayed at the beginning of the service, we said, we are grateful for them, but help us to, in essence, follow in, the, in their steps. Secondly, this is, even though it really doesn't have a lot to do with us, it's Groundhog Day. And so, yeah, the, I think he saw his shadow, which means not so much for us, but up there, there'll be a lot more winter, perhaps, if you believe in the predictive powers of a groundhog. Um, third is, is that this is the beginnings of Black History Month where we celebrate the courageous and often visionary contribution of African American leaders across our history, but especially over the course of the 20th century. And then, today, in the reading that we have, we have another celebration. It's, we call it the Feast of the Presentation, but the real point of the story has to do, again, with both courage and vision. In fact, if I were to unite Founders Day, Black History Month, and at least the Feast of the Presentation, maybe not Groundhog Day, the thing that stands out in each of those cases has to do with individuals who were willing to be courageous, men and women of vision, and who as a result of that courage and vision were willing to actually step out and be different, and as a result, set a pace for other people. If you think about the beginnings of the civil rights movement in the United States, if it were not for the courage of individuals who were willing to step out and be different from what was in fact expected of them, that movement may never have happened, or certainly it would have come much later than it did. Whether you're talking about Martin Luther King Jr. or Rosa Parks or many other people who stepped out, they, what they have in common was their courage and their clarity and their willingness to, in fact, be different. Rosa Parks, for example, a woman of tremendous personal Christian faith, her what was expected of her in her community of Birmingham, Alabama, was when she got on the public bus to be able to go into work, her was, what she was expected to do was to sit at the back of the bus so that the best seats up front were reserved for the white people because the inference was white people are better than black people, so they deserve the seats up front. She got on the bus, she sat in the front of the bus, she refused to leave, and that was a part of what ignited courage, in fact, in other people to say, she's right, the system is wrong, because our faith and all that we know about ourselves is, we're no better, we're no worse than they are. And in fact, we serve a God that really does believe in the equality of all people. The same is true for the people in our story about Mary, Joseph, Simeon, and Adam. Mary and Joseph were coming, actually in a very ordinary way, to bring Jesus into the temple. They were fulfilling the Mosaic law of what was asked of them. But at the heart of what was going on was that Mary was being received back into the temple because she had survived childbirth and she was healthy and she was healthy and was going to present herself. And as the firstborn son, Jesus, her son, was being presented as an act of dedication. In other words, she was saying, in essence, to God and to that community, I want what God wants for this, my son. That was a courageous thing for her and Joseph to do, particularly because she knew, because angels had spoken to her, tremendously supernatural things had happened, that her son was going to pay a high price. 
It would have been easier at one level for this carpenter and his wife to raise up his son just as another carpenter and to blend in. But she knew that God had a different plan for her son, and she was willing courageously, along with her husband Joseph, to step into that plan. And who came out as a result of that? Who got raised up? It's the one that have Christians have worshipped as the Son of God for 2,000 years. The question for today for you is who we are celebrating, both in terms of our civic celebrations as well as this celebration, is men and women who were willing to be courageous, who had clarity, who had vision, and who were willing to step out beyond what was expected of them, to in fact even perhaps go against some of the expectations to blend in and to fit in, and as a result make a difference in their generation in a way that actually in some cases changed the course of history. Do you know that that in fact could be possible for you? I, I don't know how you see yourself. I don't know what your parents have said about you. I don't know what your expectations are, but I will say to you, is that if you're willing to say, God, I want to be one of those people who makes a difference. I want to be one of those people who has the courage to step out, to speak up, to be one of those people who cares more for others than perhaps even my own well-being. Mary knew that her son would die. Even in this story, Simeon comes and says, a sword will go through your own heart as well. She knew that she was in, the sacrifice that was being made was going to be a heartbreaker for her. And more often than not, people who step out in courage do pay a price. But it is worth it. If you're not willing to pay the price and just blend in, you can actually live in some ways a very happy and fulfilling life. But that doesn't mean you're going to make a difference. You're just going to be like everybody else. What this celebration is about, both in terms of our founders, as well as Black History Month, as well as this gospel story, is men and women who are willing to step out and make a difference, asking in most cases God to give them what they needed to live with that kind of courage and that kind of clarity and that kind of vision. I, I want to say to you, if you're willing to take those kinds of steps, it's worth it. It's a hard and often painful life. There is sacrifice involved. If what you want is the easy road, this is not for you. But if you want to make a difference, if you're willing to be one of those people who says yes to whatever God's purpose is for you, then I can promise you extraordinary, extraordinary things happening in a way that will both surprise and delight you, as well as occasionally breaking your heart. But you will know that it's worth it because you are living out something that's bigger than you are, which is, in fact, God's purpose for your life. So today, as we give thanks for all of the things that we are celebrating, which are many, I would ask that you also add one thing to the list which is saying, God, I thank you that you have a plan and a purpose for my life. I thank you that you love me and that you will give me the courage that I need to be able to step out, that you will give me the vision I need to see clearly how I can make a difference. And I want to say to you, that's the best life of all. Amen.